Hi guys, welcome to another Mystery Monday. Today I'll be doing the Reading Habits book tag. See you after the intro. Today I thought I would be doing like a little um, fun video that hopefully will be easier to edit because uh, one of the videos I make this week is going to take a lot of editing. Spoiler alert, I'll be doing another one of my Goodreads prediction um, videos this week. It should be going up on Wednesday, but um, just so you guys know, it might take me a little bit to uh, edit it just because of editing all the pictures, things like that. It does hurt my hands. So it will be posted this week as the Wednesday video, but it might be a little late. So I uh, hope you guys understand. And another thing too, I want to try on today's video. I'm going to not edit out my background noise and see if it's too unbearable because I know the quality one of my outdoor videos is not the best. So let me know which ones you guys like best and then i'll be moving forward with it like let's say last monday's video i added out the background noise and today i won't so without uh further ado i want to give credit to the beautiful um nakia nakia's hideaway and i'll be linking her channel down below or you can check it here no here i remember because it's the tattoo hand tricks but anyway She's the first person that I have seen doing this tag. Also, I want to give credit to the person she credited. I'm not sure if they are the OG of this tag, but I'll link her channel down below as well. And that's Ed Red with Bintu. Uh, and then let's go jump right into the questions. Why not? The first question I have is, do you have a certain place at home? for reading and the answer is no are we all listen to audiobooks anywhere so as i'm walking around and figure out what to do or how to run my errands i'm listening usually to an audiobook uh if i'm cooking or putting groceries away or putting grocery orders um i'll listen to an audiobook i'm getting ready i listen to an audiobook so that includes my whole house the bathroom or the kitchen especially for ebooks, I mainly read ebooks on this hammock, on that uh, in my living room, on that chair that you've seen most of my videos at, and uh, in my bedroom. Books I read in the same spots as the audiobook, but the only other place that I'm thinking about starting reading my audiobooks is the bathtub on really hot days, but I haven't done that yet. Two bookmark or random piece of paper listen guys i'll shout out another booktuber andy she's amazing she has an etsy shop of um, bookmarks and i've got addicted insert a picture here aren't they gorgeous so of course bookmarks but if i decide to start a random book and i haven't had a chance to get a bookmark or if i forgot to get one any random piece of paper will do but i do like my bookmarks they are so pretty like it's my book accessory so why not and uh just so you know this is not sponsored i do not have a code i buy these bookmarks with my own money but i'll be linking her channel and her etsy shop down below because you know what why not support another youtuber and she's amazing homegrown canadian too question number three can you stop reading or do you have to stop after a chapter slash certain amount of pages that's hard in itself but i struggle with mental health um a lot of my life i have depression anxiety and um the most anxious and depressed i get i do have some ocd tendencies and that's a fact that has it's been mild enough that doesn't interfere with my life, but, um, and it, it impacts certain aspects. So I can't just finish a book anywhere. I need to finish the chapter. I just have this thing that everything I start, I need to finish and everything has to be 
in order so yes I can just I'll stop right here and I'll pick up from it the moments I do this all I think about is finishing that chapter so whenever possible I try to finish the chapter before I close the book let's say it's an emergency with my son or I get a phone call someone rings a bell then obviously I'm not going to finish the book but then when I go back I start the chapter from the beginning because I need a whole thing <laughs> no, we don't think less of me, but there's no shame in being who I am. Question number four, do you eat or drink while reading? Yes, I um, will usually have water or coffee. If I'm having a meal by myself, I put like my book right in front of me and I have my meal as I eat. And um, if I'm having with a family, now we talk. But other than that, so every now and then I will snack. But... Um, Fun fact, I only snack when I'm reading ebooks because I don't want to touch my precious books with dirty hands. Five, multitasking. Music or TV while reading? The answer is no. I, I get immersed in books when I'm reading, whether it's audiobooks, ebooks, real books. I, I really get immersed and I need to be there that needs to be my world because I build it in my head and I have very distracted hearing and I'm very sensitive to noises as well so if someone is talking or the tv is going on or music then I'll focus on what those people are reading and it's like my brain is in a loop I'm reading the same paragraph over and over again so I don't but one thing that I've discovered recently um, as I mentioned, noise. So when people are talking or being loud or watching other TV shows, I can't concentrate on a book, my book either. If I'm not listening to an audiobook and I'm reading with my eyeballs, I will put some background uh, music and I even curated my own sound. And um, my perfect sound is a mix of thunderstorm, rain, window and rain on this app that I get. So this is what I listen to. when I'm reading around people. Rain, honestly, is one of my favorite things, is my comfort sound. I love the moon, I love the rain, I love the ocean sound. <laughs> Maybe I should try that. Anyway, the answer is no. I'll listen to background music so I can concentrate on a book, but no TV or music. Question number six, one book at a time or several at once? Before I used to read one book at a time and I needed to read in one sitting. And uh, when I got pregnant and I had my son, I think that's why I got into such a big slump because I simply couldn't. Like life got busy, I had to put book downs and then I didn't. And then, you know, I went on a 10 year slump. I'm getting older, so I decided to, you know, try my brain. So what I do is now I read at least three books at a time. I have an audiobook, an ebook, and um, a physical book. Sometimes I'll do immersive reading where I listen and read to the book at the same time. But usually I have many books on the go, but no more than three or four. And it's just more of like a mood thing. Like I said, I get into the head of the characters and into the stories. So sometimes that's not a very good mind space to be in. So I need a break from that and I get something lighter or I get a different perspective just so I don't let the mood of the narrator completely affect me because they can't do that. I'm, I'm an empath. So I really feel the feels and sometimes it's really heavy. Like worst thing I've ever done was read We Have Always Lived in a Castle and The Haunting of Hill House back to back. Shirley Jackson is amazing. <sighs> but it affect me. Seven, reading at home or everywhere? Well, <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. I read when I walk as long as I'm not with someone. I'm either reading or listening to an audiobook. I do prefer human interaction, believe it or not. So when I'm around people, I'm not reading. Obvs. And even at work, this is a fun fact. Sometimes we have to do a lot of... Um, I am an early childhood educator, I work with children, but we are currently delivering 
an online program. So there's a lot of planning that goes behind and all setting up and we make resources to send the bag so it's accessible to everyone. So whenever we're doing these things that don't require our brains, I had like a bookish um, co-worker who's now a friend, Faiza, and uh, we would uh, just put an audiobook on speaker and we would listen to it as we're doing things. And uh, that was amazing. She's the one that introduced me to audiobooks and that changed my game. So the first one we heard together and got really interested in was um, one by John Mars. And oh my God, that was amazing. That audiobook. Mm -hmm. And the book too, you should check from us. But anyway, question number eight. Reading aloud or silently in your head. I don't like my voice. So I do read silently. Number nine, do you read ahead or ever skip pages? No. Because again, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm, I read books, especially mysteries, which is mystery thriller, still my favorite. I read them and I need to figure out all the puzzle pieces. And I'm one of those people that actually enjoy, if I guess, the twist. I don't feel bad about it because I was able to put the clues together, right? I love it when I'm surprised, but when I'm not. So I never skip ahead because what if I miss the one clue? I'll feel really stupid, won't I? Uh, but what I'll do sometimes, because I cannot DNF, what I'll do is if I'm really not into the book, I speed read through it. So it's like my eyes go like, it's like I'm reading it four times. So I'm able to get the most of it, but I still know what happened in each paragraph. 10, breaking the spine or keeping in you. I have some old books and they have the spine broken already. But what I can say is that I purposely do not break spines. So if the spine is broken, it's broken. But I usually, I, I read it like this. Or like, I, I don't ever, ever do that. It's, and I don't even have to try. It just became ingrained in me, even if the spine is already broken. Obviously, I have some older books and some books that I bought used. They have the spine broken and that's fine. But I never break the spine. I mean, like would you break a child's leg on purpose? No, right? I hope. And 11, do you write in your books? Sometimes. I stopped writing in my books even though sometimes I miss it. Um, like I started this book to, I started talking about books on my channel because I wanted to do an Agatha Christie series, but in order to do that, I need my OG Agatha Christie books in Portuguese and my mom was just not mailing them to me. So that might be a while. But on those books that I started reading when I was 11, I will read them through the first time and somewhere in the book, I would, I was 11, okay guys, I would write down whether or not I guessed the solution and to extent because sometimes it's like half uh, or not at all and I would write down the stars on the books and that's why I want them so I can do the comparison of what I think about them now and what I did when I first read them. So I've read every single Agatha Christie book at least four times, twice in Portuguese, twice in English and more than that for my favorites because I love the dame but once I read the book a second time again I was 11 I had this dream cast in my mind so I would highlight characters descriptions I would highlight solutions and then I would have this is who I want to play this person and in my head it was a, a temporal um, casting so it would be the actor I want to play them at the age the character is, but sometimes an actor was dead or it was a child, but it would work. So I would write on that and obviously all of my school, um, my school books, I would write on them my notes. I would annotate the hell out of them. 
Now I stopped doing that. And the reason why I stopped doing that is because I realized that every, a book is a gift. And I don't know who said it. I wish I knew because I want to credit them. If you know, type it down below. But every time an author publishes a book, it stops being theirs. It becomes the readers and it becomes the readers because when you read the book, you project your feelings and your moods and you take things away from it. So I've learned that I can read the same book many times and every time I find something different, my opinion about the book changes because I'm not the same when I'm reading it for the second or third time. So I stopped annotating on my books because I don't want to take away from my future experience of rereading a book. I want to come in with a fresh start if that makes any sense. And besides, I love lending books because I want to share reading experiences and I don't want to influence the next person reading them. So I don't do that anymore. And that was that. How do I manage to make this video so long? I talk a lot, sorry about that. But anyway, thank you so much for being here. If you do have a channel or somewhere and you wanna do this tag, please go ahead, consider yourself tagged, but I'm not gonna do that on purpose just because, you know, I want you to have fun like I did. And uh, you guys know that I'll see you again this week. And until next time with the hummingbird.